From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. How you making out, Johnny boy? Who is this? You disappoint me, Johnny. You ought to recognize the condition of not the voice. Joe Crayley? Yeah, the drunken reporter on the Daily Herald. I want to talk to you. Where are you? Oh, no, you don't. Not tonight. Why not? In ten minutes, you'd have me shooting my big mouth off. About the rackets here? And the murder of the honorable chief of police. And the peculiar morals of his lovely young wife. And Joe, listen. And L- last but not least, the ethical and philosophical problems of an intellectual lush. A reformed idealist who once or even twice Joe, tried... Joe, an hour ago, in front of City Hall, somebody fired five shots at me. Joe, are you there? Beat it, Johnny. Grab a plane, train, bus, or walk, but get out now. When they put the finger on, it sticks. Greensport, boy, is a wide-open town. Tonight, and every weekday night, Bob Bailey in the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly... Johnny Dollar. From Special Investigator Johnny Dollar, location Greensport, Missouri, to the Home Office, Great Plains Guarantee Company, Hartford, Connecticut. Assignment The Open Town Matter. Expense account continued. Item 7, $1.85, taxi to the home of the mayor of Greensport, Will Lyons. I decided to go straight to headquarters, so to speak. Joe Crayley, professional reporter and semi-pro drunk, might have been able to help, but I didn't know where to find him. So far, I had a lot of questions, no answers. Police Chief Ed Blake had been shot to death in his own home with his own gun. His young widow, Marty, and city attorney Dave Sherman had been present and both told the same story, mysterious prowler. Supposedly, the prowler was Shorty Wells, an ex-convict with a grudge against the murdered chief. But Shorty was missing, and the case was at a standstill. So I went right to the top to Mayor Lyons. Come in, Mr. Dollar. Come right in. Thanks. My wife has gone out this evening, committee meeting at the women's club. Uh, We can talk here in the library, if you don't mind. All right, fine. Take a chair there. Yeah, well, Mr. Dollar, I will say it's a pleasure to see you safe and sound. Oh, you heard about the shooting, then? I heard the shots from my office. Then the acting chief of police phoned me a few minutes later. Well, does he know yet who did it? Uh, Not the slightest. There were no witnesses, at least none who cared to talk. Car took off at high speed and then just disappeared. Like Shorty Wells. Fine. I sympathize with your feelings, Mr. Dollar. I'd feel the same way if I'd been made a target of... But you can rest assured, sir, that every facility of law enforcement in this town is working round the clock to bring the culprits to justice. Yeah, well, that's very comforting, Mayor. But actually, I'm not sure I was the target. What do you mean? Well, when I left you and Dave Sherman and came out onto the sidewalk, Marty Blake was waiting for me in her car parked at the curb. She'd been there about 20 minutes, she told me. Yes, but I Whoever fired those shots had the set-up plan worked out, and I don't think they could very well have planned it for me. Why not? My schedule wasn't predictable enough. They didn't know when I'd leave City Hall, whether I'd be alone or not, or what I'd do when I stepped outside. It's a point, all right. Marty, on the other hand, had been there for 20 minutes. Plenty of time to arrange the thing. But why? Why should anyone want to kill her? Well, there you got me. I don't know. After the shooting, of course, I had a police officer assigned to guard duty at her home, but I regarded it as merely a routine precaution. I was certain that the attempt was made on your life, Mr. Dollar. Well, those bullets came too close to both of us for very much peace of mind. Well, at least Mrs. Blake has protection now. Oh, yeah, yeah. Unless that police officer himself knocks her off. (laughs) Well, you're joking, of course. Mayor, that's the worst thing about this whole case. I don't know whether I'm joking or not. But surely you don't think... And you, are you certain of which ones you can trust in the attorney's office, the police force, in your own department even? Not entirely, no. Well, the rackets as wide open as they are here, some of the men around you are bound to be involved. I know. It stands to reason. Every raid we've ever attempted has been tipped off before we even got started. Blake tried while he was alive. Dave Sherman tried. I even organized two myself. Told nobody about them. 
brought in state police to carry them out. Same result. Say, what about Blake? He must have been in with a mob to live on that lavish scale he did. I suppose so. Dave and I suspected him at times, but we could never turn up any actual evidence. Why are he and the city attorney friends? Ed and Dave? <laughs> no, they couldn't get along at all. And yet, the night Blake was shot, Dave Sherman was staying overnight in his home. Yes, I know. I've thought myself it was a little odd. Dave says Blake had asked him to, invited him to go on a fishing trip the next morning. <laughs> a fishing trip? And yet they couldn't get along. I know. I can't explain it any more than you can. Any chance Dave Sherman was the intended victim that night instead of Blake? I really don't see how, Mr. Dollar, in view of the circumstances. Blake was killed when he heard a prowler and went downstairs to investigate. No one could have expected Dave to do something like that. No, no, I guess not. It was just an idea. I've thought of all kinds of outlandish possibilities myself, but it always comes back to the same thing. Shorty Wells. Yeah, the ex-convict who swore he'd get Blake when he went to prison. He was paroled just the week before, Mr. Dollar, and he was seen in town the day before the killing. And nobody has found hide nor hair of him since. Yeah, yeah, it adds up all right. But somehow I still can't buy it. Maybe it just adds up a little too well. Three-fourths of the criminals who are sentenced make threats like that, but it's a rare one who carries it out. Rare, yes, but not unknown. Oh, true. I admit he's a strong possibility. But when I hit town this afternoon, I thought Marty Blake was a strong possibility, until the city attorney himself came up with an airtight alibi for her. Why did you suspect her, Mr. Dollar? Insurance. A $50,000 policy on Blake's life. His wife's the beneficiary. Well, I don't imagine 50000 will last Mrs. Blake very long. Hey, tell me something, Mayor. Are she and Dave Sherman close friends? Well, at one time, yes. Uh, in fact, Dave was pretty serious about her. But after she married Blake last year, Dave turned against her completely. I see. I don't think he'd risk an alibi for her out of friendship, if that's what you're thinking. Oh, I don't know exactly what I'm thinking. Mostly I'm just guessing. <sighs> I've been doing that two years now, Mr. Dollar. Guessing, figuring, trying to spot the leader behind these rackets. Not knowing which officials I could trust. Mayor, is Dave Sherman one of those you can trust? I'm not sure. Good evening, Mrs. Blake. Well, this is a surprise. Come in, Johnny. Join the party. Thanks. Of course, I'm the party. There isn't anybody else. Except my watchdog sitting out there in front. Yeah, I saw him. Cute, isn't he? Oh, I didn't notice. I did. Think that's terrible, Johnny? A girl who's been a widow four days noticing another guy. Why not? You didn't care anything about your husband. That's right, I didn't. Here's to all husbands. May they rest in peace. He's a cute cop, all right. You know what? I asked him to come inside and have a drink with me, and he actually blushed and stammered. Now, wasn't that cute? Devastating. <laughs> Would you blush and stammer, Johnny? No, I'd take the drink, which I will, by the way, if you don't mind. Here. Make me another one, too. All right. What's the reason for this one-woman celebration, Mrs. Blake? I said, what's I the... I heard you... And you can call me Marty if you want me to answer you. All right, Marty. Why the lonesome gal routine? It's not so lonesome now, Johnny. Oh. Here's your drink. Used to getting shot at. Shot at how, Marty? Like we were this afternoon? Or like your husband? Everybody can't be lucky. Maybe Ed just didn't live right. <laughs> well, he's not living anyway now. I bet you know how to live, Johnny. Oh, sure. I got a system. Tell me about it. Well, the first thing I do is hook up with the rackets so I can buy my wife lots of expensive gifts. Why don't you lay off that stuff? Why don't you try being nice for a change? Well, that's not part of my system. I didn't kill him. You know that now. So why don't you relax and be human? Oh, the last time I relaxed around you, I caught the breeze off of five bullets. You're breathing, aren't you? I might not be if they'd been after me instead of you. So you're still on that kick? Oh, it figures, Marty. I'm no threat to anybody, not yet. I don't know enough about this mess. And you're saying I do, I suppose. I think so. Now, who'd want to get you out of the way, Marty? 
to keep you from talking, maybe. Don't you ever give up. Oh, all right, tell me this. Did Dave Sherman really see that shooting, or is he just giving you an alibi? Why don't you ask him? Or is he giving himself an alibi by any chance? You're crazy. Maybe. Where's Shorty Wells? What? I said, where is Shorty? I heard what you said. Well, then suppose you tell Get me. Get out! What are you so upset Get about? Get out of here right this minute. Get out or so help me off. Take the... it easy, Marty. What's that cute cop going to think? I don't care what anybody thinks. You get out of here and get out fast. Item nine, $14.40. Drinks, tips, and transportation for a local expedition in plain and fancy pub crawling. I was looking for Joe Craley, disillusioned idealist and erstwhile reporter on the Greensport Daily Herald. I found him on my third martini. He was on a seventh. How, oh, Johnny? How'd you do it? To what? How'd you find me? Mm, called your paper. They gave me a list of your hangouts. I had four more to go. <laughs> the reputation is a wonderful thing. Keeps you from staying off the straight and narrow. Is looking at you. Right. Joe, mm. tell me about Marty. Tell you what about it? Everything you know. But for her, she's got an alibi. Oh, yeah, I know. I know. But you still won't give up. Well, she hates champagne, but she always orders it. Why? Because it costs more. I see. She's every man's dream, Johnny, a pink and gold doll in spangled tights, and she's a four-star tramp. She's an ex-dancer, isn't she? She's an ex-lot of things. Ex-girlfriend of Shorty Wells, ex-girlfriend. Huh? Girlfriend of Shorty Wells? Sure. Ed Blake took her away from him. That's why Shorty threatened to kill him. Said Blake was framing him. Maybe he was, I don't know. Anything could have happened with the police they got in this town. Crooked? Is that what you're trying to say? Some of them are that. The rest of them are useless. Like that business with the gun. What gun? That Ed Blake was shot with. They found it lying beside his body, his own gun. They just assumed he'd shot it out with the killer. It was two days before they realized he'd been shot with that gun. That Blake hadn't used it, the killer had. Wait a minute. Do you think Shorty Wells and Marty could have planned the thing together? Johnny, I wouldn't put anything past that dame. Why do you hate her so much, Joe? Guess again, my friend. I don't hate her. I'm in love with her, always will be. Joe? Yeah, before she met Shorty Wells, she used to be my girl. <laughs> Gives you something to think about, doesn't it, Johnny? <laughs> Here's our star to tell you about tomorrow's episode of this week's story. Tomorrow, a man with a gun, desperate, faces a blazing inferno and gambles his life. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dow. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood, written by Les Crutchfield. It is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Be sure to join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. Roy Rowan speaking. <laughs>